Yeah, it is. Ow. Yeah. Alright, so we're chilling on Lake Maggiore. It's stunning if you want to give a little pan around. This is Lake Maggiore. A bit slower than that. Like, like take it in the straight Lake Maggiore. So that's where we are. Switzerland is that away. Where we're we going later on, maybe tomorrow. Um, and hopefully, two days' time, we'll be surf uh, <laughs> surfing, snowboarding up on Jungfrau. We did some glacier in, uh, in Europe. Anyway, we're doing a video now because we've been running out here for a couple of hours since we've been doing some hard foot traveling recently. And we haven't done anything since um, the Spezia when <laughs> when Al, well, well, Al, do you want to explain this bit? Um, demon bug, sorry. Do you want to explain this bit, Al, what happened uh, back well, in the Spezia or just before? Well, we it? Up, uh, we got bumped up because uh, my panniers were off balance. So. I was standing up and going up the steep hills basically, like really giving it all I got up the hills and my wheel just, one of the spokes broke and I think the wheel buckled like, for like 10, 15 minutes, I don't know, for what I could have to turn it. And uh, basically I had a walk, I think it was 40-ish, or 40, 50 kilometers to the next town. But uh, somehow we got separated. And Yeah, so, I don't understand that either. But I happened. mean, I, I went into, um, I asked a bus driver for to take my bike on the bus, and he said, no, 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 you can't do that. And uh, there was a lovely couple, an Italian couple, coming off the bus, and I started talking to them, and they invited me into their house, and they gave me some water, uh, they gave me some fruit, and some cake, got up yeah. cake. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and maybe then, that's when you probably went past while I was in the Oh, that makes sense. I was in for about 20 minutes in the house. That makes sense. I knew that. And then uh, I got into the space here at about 11, 12 o'clock, maybe, maybe a bit later. Uh, and then I spent like three hours cycling around with a few guys, which you, you weren't even in the town because you decided to camp out just outside. Uh, I yeah. met two crazy people. One, he sat on me while I needed him from the train station because he kept on asking me, uh, demanding money. Uh, or else. And I slept like 30 feet behind the tourist office. And just before I went to sleep, actually, I went to see some jazz drum or play Latin beats. Because there was like a, a big event on or something. And that sums it up really. Um, I think what, what, what time did we meet the next day? When we met him, what did we do? We, uh, <laughs> we bombed it. Did about 40k in half an hour, something stupid like that. We actually stopped thinking we were gonna, you know, fatigue because Alex's um, rear wheel was buckled, there was no way he could ride it up the hills. Or we, down the hills. You can, yeah, or, yeah, well. So we uh, we assumed he'd be pushing, the, pushing his bike all the way along and, you know, we'd catch up to him pretty quickly. So we stopped at a little supermarket, bought a bunch of pears. The best pears ever. The best pears ever. Uh, chilled out there for like a good hour. I think we'd still catch you. And then we got on the road and did, it, did about 5k, thinking, okay, he's gone further than we thought, this is good. Another seven, another, another, well, got to about seven, you know, thinking, where is he now? About, about ten, we're thinking, now, how has he pushed his bike this far in an hour? Up this, uh, 10k, as in 10k, like, on up some up, ridiculous up vertical, like yeah. 45 degrees, up, like, 1,600 meters or something stupid, but it was, it was the point was it wasn't so much how steep it was, it was how long and winding and pain in the ass. Anyway, um, got to about what 15k and we're thinking we've lost him. Where's he gone? What's happened? Now we're thinking actually that you someone had taken pity on you and seen you wheeling your shit all the way along that road up that mountain, thinking <laughs> that kid's you know he needs help. And I'm taking you on something, or taking you up to the Spezia to meet us. 
So by then we were just bombing it. We were thinking, okay, the sun's about to go down, we're not going to catch you unless we get there. So we went really fast then, did like 40k in half an hour. And what, you know, I say for like 40k in half an hour, that was probably like 20k up the, the mountain. Well, no, it was less than that. It was like 10k going up the mountain, wasn't it? Yeah. And then like literally like stupid amounts of speed on the way down. Like stupid speeds. Very, very stupid speeds. Nearly dead sort of speeds. There was this one banked turn. It was mental. You, pretty you pretty that awesome. Yeah, turn? I remember that. That was mental. Yeah. Like literally banked. I don't know what lot of, sort of angle I was at, but it was crazy. Anyway, it was like a fully like a mountain bike trail. Um, so we stopped just before. Oh, we did. Well, how many bloody tunnels were there? I went Those, three. Yeah, right. Those, there was like the first one was like five k long. It was like five ten k worth of tunnels, and uh, that's not good when you haven't got lights. Uh, it's probably dark and it's not fun to breathe in either under the tunnels. But you know, cuts out the mountains, so that's all good. Anyway, so came out of them about. Half nine? Yeah, something like that. Getting dark. Well, it was dark by then. We thought, okay, we're going to camp. Came over to the side of this road. Um, what did we do then? We just had some pasta. Good, good pasta. Yep. Italian pasta. It was our first Italian pasta, actually, of the whole trip. That was good. Significantly better than the French pasta. Then, um, methane got bitten to shit. Some demon bugs popped out. Oh, shooting star. Awesome shooting star. So the big, the brightest shooting star I've ever seen. That was cool. You missed it. What are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that was that. Next day, found you. This, I'm not very good at telling anything, honestly. It's going to take ages. <laughs> Someone else do it. So we found you next day. I can't even remember what happened next day. Al, you remind me. Uh, so the next day, uh, we uh, went uh, into uh, Lesprezia. That was so, it. Yeah. Okay, I'll leave it. Keep, continue. I, I was in the... That park sleeping, and you know, I'd say, oh, okay, I'm just going to go to the train station, and I just sat there, like eyes wide open for about three hours. And that's when uh, you text me, so you'd like charge your phone around, and I just saw you walk in, and I was just sitting there, and I was thinking, oh, I remember my now. god, I'm feeling really tired now. <laughs> I remember now, that Taiwanese guy, I met that Taiwanese guy, well, he wasn't Taiwanese, he was Irish, but he lived in Taiwan. That's it, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was cool. He was really cool. Yeah. He told us how fucked you were. Like, True. Oh yeah, the voice fucked. But it wasn't like that. It was a very odd. It wasn't like yeah, it wasn't Irish. Irish. It wasn't Irish. Irish, no. Taiwan, American. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, before me and Dan appeared in the station, did you? What were you thinking? Were you thinking this trip was over? Did you think it was game over, guys? Uh, like, I was yeah. really worried. I'd like, cause, uh, I'd looked everywhere for a bike shop in this place as well. I'd ridden everywhere. I mean, like I knew that boat so well by the time we got there. I was just constantly riding up the tree. I must have done like 160k if you walk in and cycling that day. I was so tired. Um, I was hallucinating the next day actually. I was looking at the stairs and it, it looked like an escalator, but it was an actual, it was an ordinary stairs, but it looked like it was moving. I don't know why that was, but my head was completely wrecked by then. Um, but yeah, I'd, I mean, we, we still haven't got that bike fixed, but I'm riding it. Uh, I've been told that it isn't too bad to ride. By? What? By who? By the most fucking amazing girl I've like, She's amazing. Was Mary Jones. So, so, inspiration was just. Yeah. I've been three years on crutches. Then she decides, okay, I'm just gonna jump on a bike and cycle because you were for three months. And she did it hardcore. She's younger than me. Yeah, I'm just like, 20, 21? Yeah. And she's well, she's from Dunbury. Dunbury. Like what? Great. Two hours from Snaffy? I don't think it's that. Not even that, hour and a half. Like that. She's blown away. Yeah, she's got stunning. She puts things into perspective. Just a bit. bit. She got stunning. I, I, there's me worrying about, oh, uh, fuck my wheel, I say I can't cycle. And she falls off her bike. Oh, and yeah. Amazing. Yeah, she goes to a hospital and can't cycle for another 10 days. Yeah. And then she just jumps on the back on her bike and carries on the trip. So she was incredible. So we're standing by her. And she, things I noticed about her were the, like how she was. I mean, I don't know. It's just weird to see a girl. It sounds sexist, I know, but 
you said it's easy no, it's the same thing, didn't you? Nothing. Yes, I did. Yeah. It's weird to see a girl. Can't really so blase it. about it, I guess. Uh, yeah, how do yeah. I do this in a non-sexist way? Like, it's just, sexist. she was so real, very real, and like, uh, I don't know. It was just, it was just, it was just so. I was very impressed, so impressed, and even her response to how astounded we were. And that was, that wasn't the only girl we found who was amazing. It was the two girls from New Zealand. Oh yeah, yeah. they were awesome too. Oh, you said Sienna. Sienna, yeah, we got them in Sienna. Damn, we haven't done... This was so long ago. Like, it was so long ago, and Sienna was three days ago, I think. Three? Four days ago? Four days ago. Four yeah. days ago, man. It's crazy. What have you done for the last four days, actually? I can't... Rome. Rome oh, and Rome. Florence twice, I believe. No, Florence is before Sienna. Yeah, the last two days, yeah, we've been doing a lot of the last 17th and 18th were... Well, uh, what were they? Was it Rome? I don't know. I remember we spent oh, half of the 17th in... Rome. Yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we're going to be saying goodbye to Italy now. Tomorrow. Or tomorrow. tonight. Tonight or tomorrow, we're going to be heading into the southern border. Well, that's where we're at. It's just over there. The southern border of Switzerland. It's about 20k away, I reckon. 20, 30k, maybe a bit more. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to meeting more crazy people. And there's that millionaire. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The psycho. He wasn't a psycho, man. He was not a psycho, Alex. He was cool. He just had a messed up life, clearly. Just because his hands cool, were shaking. Like, but I don't think he's the kind of guy you want to like, um, mess around with. He's interesting. Oh, yeah, he seemed really cool, right? But he seemed like one of those guys that uh, he was like. Um, his family. Like well, I don't know about that, but his family uh, are stupidly, stupidly rich. True. On his private jet, he left home at some age, I think 23. Uh, didn't like this, their lifestyle. Like they, they, I think they've been like born into wealth, inherited it because apparently they founded some city in Belgium. Um, and um, he left the family to, I don't know, escape. I don't know what. But he went to uh, France, bought a little chateau out there. Well, I say little, probably huge. Um, but he was like, five years later, they found him, apparently. Done. And despite, he, he apparently got a French passport so that they couldn't deport him or something. I'm not even sure how it worked or whatever. But he was, he was aware of what they would do if they ever found him. So he got a passport, a French passport, apparently, is what he got. And I suppose Eurozone now doesn't mean crap. I don't know. But they got five armed guards and two nurses to escort him on a private jet back to uh, Belgium or wherever his family were. And uh, he spent nine years in a psychiatric, a psychiatric hospital. When we saw him, his hand was shaking. He's there on my iPhone trying to type in his address for his, um, for his second house or whatever in Belgium that he was inviting us to stay at. Yeah. Um, but uh, he's clearly, you know, been through a bit. But he was a very interesting man, and telling us how, you know, his family are from higher places than he is, and they don't respect him. And I don't know. I felt, I really felt for him. But uh, yeah, clearly comes from a very, very wealthy background. I mean, nothing could tell by his watch. And uh, it's, it, it sort of struck me. It, it, it quite often it struck me now that we've met people. Yes. With quite a bit of wealth. They hate it. Yeah, well, they, that's not, yeah, they're not that happy with it. And then we meet these people very often with almost nothing or next to nothing, or they have something, but they're, you know, they're running around the world with next to nothing, and that's when they're loving it. You know, that's when they're happy in themselves, and it just shows you that you know, what I always knew, well, not always, but what I always thought to be true, um, happiness lies within, doesn't it? It's not external, you can't pull it in from everywhere else, it has to be internalised. Anyway. Dan's pearls of wisdom moment there. Crap. There you go. <laughs> Nothing? Yes? Is Maybe that it? Um, don't know, there's a lot of war around here. Don't know if you noticed. <laughs> Loads of war.
and we're all together still. It's very funny. <laughs>